glorify you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We worship and magnify your holy name, for you are worthy, Lord God, of all the praise. You are worthy, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And so, God, today, Lord God, we open up ourselves to receive from you, Lord God, all that you have for us, God. I pray, God, as you sweep through, Lord God, this nation, this, Lord God, this world, Lord God, I pray, God, that you would have your way, Lord God. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you would be glorified and exalted in the earth. Father, forgive us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, for our place and how we conducted ourselves, Lord God. Empty us of ourselves, Lord God, that we may, Lord, in the name of Jesus, worship you in spirit and in truth, God. And so, Father, today, God, on this day, God, in the name of Jesus, April 18, God, 2020, God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that we would exalt you, Lord God, that we would lift you up, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, that we will magnify your holy name, for you alone are worthy to be praised, worthy to be exalted, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And for this we thank you, and we glorify you, we lift you up, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Welcome. Welcome today to Christian Love Fellowship Ministries International. Welcome to our Sunday morning service. We want you to feel free to give God praise throughout this service. We want you to exalt his holy name right in the place where you sit. We want you to feel welcome. Join us today as we begin to give God, the living God, our praise and our worship. Hallelujah, hallelujah, enjoy yourself. And again, welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come and enter into worship with us as we begin to see your praise. Sing and pray that home, wherever you are. Give God the glory, give God the honor. In Jesus.
We worship you, O God. We lift you up, Father, in the name of Jesus. And we magnify you, Lord, on this day, God. We glorify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Father. Glory to your holy name, God. You alone are worthy to be praised. Worthy to be glorified. Worthy to be honored in the name of Jesus. There's no other name above the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's something about that name. Jesus. There's something about the power that's in that name. Jesus. Hallelujah, oh God, we bless your name. We lift you up, God. We magnify you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. For there is none other, Lord oh God, than you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. There's something about the name Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I know we're supposed to be going further in this, in this ministry today, but God, I wanted to stay right here for a second, God. And give you praise. Exalt your holy name, God. Hallelujah. We've been in a rush all our lives. And now, God, we need to take time, God, to glorify your name. To lift up the name of Jesus. The name that is above all names. Hallelujah on the name of Jesus. The name that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Jesus. 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 I fall in. It's a habit. 
but my eyes are open. I know where I am. It's my fault. I get out immediately. Chapter 4. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. This time, I walk around. The final chapter, chapter 5. I walk down a different street. This story, to me, it ref we can reflect on this throughout our lives. We see things, but yet we ignore it at times. Or we think we can maneuver around it rather than change our total thought, our total thinking, and reposition ourselves to walk down a totally different street. Change thinking changes lives. Something to make you go, hmm, what if we didn't have smartphones today during this pandemic crisis? What if we had no access to technology like computers or tablets today? What if we didn't have the social media platforms today? Here's my question. What would be your tool or tools for connecting with people today? What would be your tool? I want you to think about that for a second. What would be your tool for connecting with people today. It was, it, here's a, another question, and well, here's a statement I would say. Do we disregard the past, the old ways of how we did things? No, we don't. We don't disregard the past, the foundation. And that's what's wrong with a lot of us today, that we ignore the foundation. I see athletes who are playing different sports. They're at a high level, they're doing amazing things, but it all was springboarded off the foundation. So we don't ignore the past, but we know it's stuck in it. Because see, in the past, we gotta remember it was folks that were in church all day, all week, immer immersing themselves in the things of God. It was in the past that the mothers were on the walls, praying day in and day out for us. It was in the past that the old hymn was sung without drums, without guitars, without different types of keyboards and sounds. It was strictly foot stomping, hand clapping. And yet God was present. The commitment and value of the house of God was real. See, it was in those days that someone came and introduced Christ to me. So I thank God for the past. But I also thank God that he's moving us into a new time in our life. Let me spend a little time talking to you about the Israelites thinking. In the book of Exodus, we see when God instructed Moses to confront Pharaoh to release the children of Israel who was in bondage for over 400 years in Egypt. Being somewhere for 400 years, that's a long time. And your mind begins to take on that place and that time that you're in. But there was a problem bigger way bigger than the Israelites being freed from physical bondage. And that was helping them to be free mentally. We can be somewhere for a long time, but if we stay there, God is a moving God. He's always moving. See, the Israelites took an 11-day journey and turned it into a 40-year and during that time, there was a lot of deaths, and there was a lot of continued bondage in many other types of things. For example, in Exodus 14, we see Pharaoh and the Egyptians pursue the Israelites after they left Egypt. And when the Israelites seen Pharaoh and his army on top of them, 
they panicked. And in verse 11 and 12, we read, And they said to Moses, Why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? What have you done to, to us? Why did you make us leave Egypt? Verse 12 is key. Didn't we tell you this would happen? While we were still in Egypt, we said, leave us alone, let us be slaves to the Egyptians. Now hold on to this last statement. They said, it's better for us to be a slave in Egypt rather than a corpse in the wilderness. Wow. Wow. We get to a place where we don't even know and recognize that this is an opportunity that's, that most times a crisis presents an opportunity to the believer. It allows us to start thinking more creatively. It allows us and it should have us to focus on God and his will for us. But yet, when we find our backs up against the wall, when we're feeling pressure, we feel like we can't move on, we begin to want to go back to slavery, back to the place that kept us bound. And we would rather die a slave than to live and seek opportunities for the Lord. See, the issue here is that the Israelites thinking is the issue we see. When we start to see the problem that's in front of us to be bigger than the promises of God and the assurances of God, then we refuse to change our mind to go beyond our current situation and our current status that we may find ourselves in. That's what causes us the problem. When we get stuck. See, in 2009, the late Apostle Robert A. Hill started teaching on a topic called change and how we can't stay where we are even if things are well. Listen to that. Even if things are well, we still must be able to change and to move because God is always again moving. But rather, we have to open ourselves. Now, that that's key. Open up ourselves. Open up our thinking. Open up the way we see things. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We have to be willing to open ourselves up for God to transform, change, transform, change us, and reposition us to accomplish his will for our lives. We have to be that kind of person to be transformed by God and to be repositioned by God to be able to accomplish his will. The tragedy for some of us is that we get comfortable. How many of us get comfortable with what we are? I would even say that some of us are comfortable even in this crisis of staying home. We've got to a place where we we got our videos, we got our Netflix, we got a refrigerator, we got toilet paper, we got paper towels, we got everything we need. We have settled in to being socially distant from other people. I don't want to challenge you, don't become socially distant. You can be physically distant, but stay socially in contact with other people. Some people have gotten comfortable. Some people have nestled in and said, yes, this is an introvert's dream. To be able to just be to ourselves. Now, otherwise, me as an extrovert, I'm an extreme extrovert. This is crushing me. Oh, my God. I would love to be able to hold and to hug and to be around a lot of people, but I can't. Because then I would endanger other people's lives or my life be in danger. But people have got comfortable. And we don't want to get to that place. When we're comfortable, when things get tight, or sometimes they just get flat out bad. We're at a time when things are just bad. 
People are dying. People are getting sick. Loved ones are scared. People are panicking because of this silent killer called COVID-19. This morning, I got a text from a good friend. Her five-year-old cousin passed away. And I'm sitting here like, wow. This is a time that God is moving and doing something, and we've got to prepare ourselves to move with him. Apostle Hill, in 2010, before his passing, he introduced this, this concept of ready and impact, and that the drama we endured in 2009 is over, and we need to position ourselves for the impact. See, the opportunity that we need to start looking at taking is going to happen when we change our way of thinking, and it's going to reposition us. If God is over here to my, to my, to my left, then I need to not focus myself on my right. I have to reposition myself to go where God is calling me to go to make the best impact for his glory and his kingdom. But too often again, we get comfortable. We nestle in when we are. Because see, we're telling God when we get comfortable, God, that's too much work. You're doing too much. Do I really need that? Take I out of this and make it God. Some of us are comfortable, just we can't wait to get back into the church. Well, here's a news flash. The church has always been with you because the church is you. What if the buildings never came back? We still are charged with sharing and spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is the role of the church, beloved. It's not to convene in a building and have comfortable worship and have all the lights and cameras in action. It's not that purpose. But God has called us to go and to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. He didn't die for a building. He died for the church, which is who? Us that we may go and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Tell the story. So again, Apostle was a man before his time when he would say that we must be ready for impact. But here's the problem, he said. He said this, we can't get there if we refuse to take a stand. When we refuse to reposition ourselves, when we refuse to change our way of thinking or be changed by the Holy Spirit that lives within us, when we refuse, we're not taking a stand for him, but we're taking a stand for this world, for the enemy, for the things in his life that have no value. Changed Thinking changes lives. Let's rethink your position. Today, when we look around the nation, we see thousands of people dying and contracting this invisible and silent killer named COVID-19. Things appear to be a no-win situation. But that's when we need to pray, as Elijah did for his servant's eye to be opened and see that the hillside was filled with horses and chariots of fire. In order for us to see that current situation, it has to be greater in our thinking. In other words, in order for us to see that this current situation is not greater than the God we serve, our minds have to be immersed in the promises of God. Our mind has to be focused on the promises of God. And we have to reposition, again, there's that word, reposition our thinking from doom and gloom to the promises and victory over this current situation. I don't have to wait for the government to open up 
or for them to find a vaccine for me to understand and for me to feel victory. I feel victory. I want us to feel victory even when all hell is breaking loose, even when we're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Why should I feel victory? Because my God is there with me. And he leads me and he guides me. I have victory. If I leave this world today, I have victory. If I stay in this world today, I have victory because Christ is with me. Again, get ready by repositioning ourselves for the impact. Take a stand in the Lord, your God, and know without a doubt that victory is ours regardless of the outcome. Reposition. Some of us are turned this way. Some of us are focusing on the thing behind us. Some of us may be focused on a thing diagonal from us. But if God is calling us to go here, this is where I need to start repositioning my thinking and reposition my life that I may line up with the things of God. Again, changed thinking changes lives. But there are some barriers to a changed mind. You know, like, too much focus on the past. You know, we remember wins of life. Remember when this happened? Remember when that happened? Or back in our day, we say, remember. Remember this happened? Remember that? Listening to those that are stuck in the yesteryears of life and refuse to reposition their thinking. If God is east, and we turn it west and we say, hey, one day we'll get there. You will never meet because they don't meet. Fear of thinking that you will lose control of your life rather than cast all your cares and everything you have upon the Lord. Let me say this, beloved, that you never had the control. The problem is you trying to make yourself the one with the control causes you to miss the opportunities that God has set you. And let me say this real quick. This, this pandemic, this crisis, this new era that we're about to enter into. You remember like when, when, the, when, the, uh, when, 19, when 9-11 happened, it took us into a new way of doing things. If you go back to the biblical times when the flood happened and Noah got out, it took them into a new way of doing things. Today in 2020, the pandemic crisis of COVID-19 is now shifting us to do things in a different way. It should present opportunity for us. Those of you who name the name of Jesus and that you have gifts and yet you sit on your gifts and you don't take opportunity to do what God has called you to do, you are not in a position of impact. You are just in a position of comfort, a position of fear, a position of laziness. And yes, I'm not going to sugarcoat this because there's too many people that name the name of Jesus, that have gifts, that have talents that God has given you. And we don't use it for his glory, for his kingdom. Some of us say, well, did nobody ask me? Well, nobody has to ask you. You need to know that you as a body, as a believer, you have a mandate, you have a responsibility to do what God has called you to do and live your life the way he's called you to live. If we don't start waking up, believers, if we don't wake up and see that we have a job, we have a mandate, Matthew 28, 16 is real. We have to go to the highways and the byways and preach the gospel. But guess what? He's given us all a gift, a talent to be able to draw people to know him. Mm. The, third, the fourth way that barriers that become the barrier of change minds is thinking that the old ways of doing things will always be the way to go and ignoring the times we're in today and the tools that God has made available to us. Let me tell you this. 
some of the churches I hear it again, I'm going to say some stuff that may not be really popular right now. But let me tell you, if you are a person that believes I'm not doing this social media thing, I'm not getting all of this, I'm not doing all this, I'm not doing this or that, technology, God gave someone the gift to invent these different forms of technology. And we have to use this technology to continue and further the gospel unto the world. By us right now doing Facebook Live, YouTube Live, website Live, Instagram Live, I don't care what it is, Snapchat Live, I don't know, but whatever it is, it's going to reach far beyond the walls of the church. People are connecting and getting online and they're looking because guess what? This crisis is causing people right now to rethink who they are. Rethink, man, is this Jesus thing real? What if I die today? What if this happens? What if that happens? Yes, our responsibility is, as believers is to make sure we're presenting the gospel. Yes, we have an empty empty sanctuary right now. Over 800 some seats in here is totally empty. But you know what? I am talking out there to hundreds and hundreds of people right now. And I hope, I can tell you, our whole time that we're going to spend even beyond this crisis is going to get, help get people to understand that Jesus Christ is the only way. Mm. Here's a question. Again, if we didn't have these things during these times, how would you reach people in this state of shutdown? Oh, I'm going to call them. Okay. Tonight. How will you be able to meet and see people? Because sometimes I want to do more than just hear a voice. Me and my wife have been separated from our grandchildren and our daughters for this whole time. But when we can pick up Zoom and do games on Zoom, my wife reads books with my granddaughter on Zoom. When we can see them, you might say, what's Zoom? Zoom is where I can look at the person's face, they can see me, and we can do things through a window of a camera, a window of a computer screen or a phone. Yes. I'm not willing to be socially distant from the people I love during a time where I have to be physically distant. How would the church be able to continue or start to reach the people with the gospel? How would we be able to do that? How would the Lord instruct us? Again, I praise God for the past ways of doing things, but I also thank him for doing a new thing. Again, change thinking changes lives. Think about this. The moment we stop trying to control our destiny, our own destiny, is the moment God can change the course of our life. The moment we sit down and we think, hey, God is in control. When did man who is the created think that he or she has more power and authority over Jesus who is the creator? The mind is set on the course to do what it wants to do. Our minds, our flesh wants to do what it wants to do. It wants to go after what pleases it. But let me tell you this. When we release ourselves, when we release ourselves, when we give up ourselves, when we release what the control we think we have of ourselves to be governed by Jesus Christ, that's when the Holy Spirit that lives within us is able to set our lives in what? Alignment with how Jesus wants us to live our lives. I don't know about you, but I want to be aligned with the Father. Having a mind of the world which is governed by our sinful nature produces death. In Romans 12 and 2, excuse me, it reads, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God 
transform there. Is that word change you, transform you, take you, repositioning you, all of that into a new person by changing the way you think. Why did I keep? Why do I keep going back to this change thinking, change his life? Because when God can reposition me to think how He thinks, to look at what He looks at, when He can do that. And I allow that to happen. My life changes in an instant. He said, but then when you do that, you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Isaiah 43, 19 says this, for I am about to do a new thing. I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. How many of you want this pathway through this wilderness of COVID-19? I want a pathway. He also says, I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. I don't know about you, but I want to be able to take that river. I want to walk along that path and know that God has me in the wilderness. I don't want to be stuck in my own thinking. I don't want to be stuck in my own fears. I don't want to be stuck by what so-and-so thinks or so-and-so thinks over there, but I want to be in a place. Come on now, I want to be in a place where God can have his way in and through my life. Come on, I, I'm not a person talking about shouting. I definitely not pray the word on the church, but I will. Note, I don't know about you, but I see a new day. I see a new day, I see a new thing that my Savior is doing in the midst of this pandemic because I serve a God who has never, ever experienced defeat. Nor has he ever had, had never, nor has he never not had a plan. Will you surrender your mind? That's the first question. Will you surrender your life? That's the second question. Will you surrender your future? That's the third question. To him that knows all things. The Bible tells us that he positioned in front of you life and death. And this is how good God is. He gives us a hint. He gives us a lifeline. You know, he gives us a clue. He says, I wish above all things that you would choose life. Mm. And in my final statement to you, I'm going to shut it down here. My final thing. I'm going to read something that Albert Einstein said a long time ago. He said this. The significant problems we face cannot be solved at the same level of thinking with which we created them. In other words, what, what I want to do and what I've gotten myself into, if I want to go and reposition myself, I can't reposition myself with the same thinking I had that caused me to turn away from God. That means I have to think differently. That means I have to look differently. That means I have to obey. Uh-oh. Obey. He says what? Obedience is better than sacrifice. Say it with me when you sit. Obedience is better than sacrifice. So I have to, if I want to change, if I want to see the problems that I used, that I created, to be different and have a solution, that means I'm going to have to reposition myself. And now, as I'm repositioning myself, guess what's going to happen some years down the line? There's going to be another era change. And that's going to cause me to reposition myself again. If I live to see that next wave, I'm going to have to reposition myself again. So I say it again, the significant problems that we face cannot, will not be solved at the same level of thinking we had with, with, with which we created them. So again, as I close, 
Change thinking changes lives. Change thinking. Say it. Change thinking changes lives. So you want to know, well, how do I start this process of change? I'm glad you asked. The first thing is acknowledge that the direction you're going in is all wrong. It's not leading you to a path to know Jesus. So in other words, I'm going to use real words, your sinful life, your misbehavior in this life, the things that causes you to go down the roads of death, the behavior that is not like Jesus. You have to apologize, repent to the Lord, not to man. And then you're going to have to, after you do that, you're going to have to believe in the God that you initially apologized to for your life, for your sinful ways. You're going to have to believe that he loved us and loved you, make it personal, that he loved you so much that he was willing to die a horrible and painful death for you. And that he did. But here's the thing you have to understand. That even when you say, God, I believe. God, I believe you died for me. You need to say the next part. God, I believe and I thank you that you also rose for me. That you also are next seated next to the Father, interceding for me. And then the last piece. You're going to have to open your mouth. You know, you know how, I'm here in Michigan, you know how when, when, when they score a touchdown, you know, we didn't hail to the victors, we are like, yes, you and them, go blue. You know that stuff y'all say, right? Well, I want you to open your mouth and confess this with the same vigor, the same excitement. God, I confess that you are Lord of my life. Go, Jesus. Thank you for being my Savior. Thank you for being the one that died for me. Thank you, and I confess that you are Lord, God. You are Lord over my life. That's the same excitement that you have to have. The same, and I'm not cutting on Michigan because I'm a Buckeye fan. I gotta say the same thing. Here's the fact. The Buckeyes or the Wolverines can't get me into heaven. And so guess what? I have to have that same excitement. I have to have that same excitement when I want to see my life changed. Are you excited? Do you want to see your life change? Do you want to have a new way of thinking? Then you need to give your life to Jesus. Admit that you're a sinner. Believe that he died and rose for you and confess that he is Lord. That's when the Bible says that you are saved, that you are changed. The old things in your life have passed away. And behold, all things become new. Now let me say this, for you young millennials that like to have stuff like that, the process does not go like that because he says that the race is not given to the swift, but the one that endures. In the process of you even enduring, you have to count the cost. He talks about, does a builder start off building a building without one counting the cost of what it's going to be? I want to encourage you. I want to plead with you before you really take this stand. I want you to realize it's going to cost you something. And that something is your life. Because everything else God paid for already. Change thinking. Changes lives. Think about it. Change thinking. Changes lives. Change thinking changes lives. Thank you. God, thank you. God, I worship you. I praise you. I praise you.
pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that everyone who is watching this, I pray that they're hearing you and not hearing me. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that their lives will be different. I pray, God, that they will no longer sit idle, but I pray that they will tap into, God, the gifts that you've given us for the building of the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Not to build buildings here on earth, but to build a kingdom here on earth, just like the one you built in heaven, God. That God, that we may represent you. I pray in the name of Jesus that people after today will not go back, God, on doing the old things, being stuck in the old ways. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you will quicken in their spirit, God, a new opportunity, a new revelation, God, that will cause them to use every gift, God, every gift, God, that you give them. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that they would take every gift, God, and use it for your glory, God. That they would no longer have a desire to stay the same, God.
that you were here right with us. You met us here. Wherever we are, God, you met us, God. We ask in the name of Jesus that you continue to be with us throughout the day, throughout the week. Protect us. Let us be mindful of those people, God, who are sick and ill. Let us be mindful of people that we need to connect with on this week, Father. Let not a day go by that we don't think of someone out there, Heavenly Father. Let us take to heart what the word was presented on today. Changed thinking changes lives. Father, we thank you for your word that we can stand upon it. We thank you, God, that we can, we can move in it, God. That you can speak your word and your word will come true. We believe in your promises, Heavenly Father. God, continue to be 